in order to make our CMS looks better, let's use uh, some UI components. So I'm going to go to mdbootstrap.com, get started and download the uh, latest version of uh, MDB. Let's, uh, let me quickly unzip it. So I'm going to do extract all. It's going to unzip me all the files. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move these files into our project. Okay, so I got this unzipped over here. So, um, okay, let me get which files do we need. Uh, let's go, let's navigate to our C drive, XAMPP, htdocs, and our CMS. And here, what we want to do is we want to uh, create a new folder. So one will uh, we'll store uh, or actually, let's, you know what, let's do it this way. So I'm going to just copy CSS and JS over here. Um, and this is how we're going to uh, get all the files necessary. We have too much because there are some more files in CSS, but we're not going to bother uh, with that at this moment. Let's get back to our code. And what we want to do now is we want to... Um, create one more file over here. We didn't use all of them yet, but don't worry, we're going to cover that very soon. Uh, I'm going to create a file, I'm going to call it header PHP, and I'm going to also add footer. So what we're going to do, we're going to combine our page by uh, using index, header, and, and footer. So in our index uh, PHP, we want to include uh, also our config. We want to include our functions, although it's empty now, but we're going to use this in a second. So functions, perhaps, uh, this is the file where we'll, uh, oh, this is type over here, functions. Uh, so we're going to store some functions, uh, which we're going to use. Um, so now let's uh, also include our header. Okay, and now what we want to do inside our header is we want to uh, do the uh, HTML like this. Let me make it bigger for you. And now we will move this part to our footer. Okay, and now here when we add footer at the end, we should see Oh, we shouldn't see an error. Um, unexpected token include expecting search line 13 in index PHP 13 echo. Okay, I didn't put the semicolon. So now we have this one here and let's do um, some sample from MD Bootstrap. Let's use navbar, for example. Uh, so let's grab something over here they are all collapsed because of the size of the screen so let me get for example this one a very basic one and um, let's copy this code and let's put it here inside index um, so what do we have to do we have to close our php now we can write our html and then we have to open php again uh, okay, so let's save it. It's not going to work, obviously, because we don't have CSS uh, connected. So let's go, let's head to our header PHP and let's mm, open, let's copy the uh, links from uh, there. And we have this in here. So in the package, I'm just going to grab it here for a second. And we're going to copy this, this, and that so we don't have to type it ourselves let's change the name cms and let's refresh and now our navbar is working perfectly fine no actually not perfectly because it doesn't work um, because we are missing js so let's go to our footer and then again from let's link the uh, just before the closing body tag let's uh, do script source and we are looking for uh, JS, uh, MDB min JS. I believe this is the file name. And now it's working perfectly fine. 
However, we don't want to have this header um, in our index file, right? Now it's in our index file, but when we create a new file like a dashboard, we will have to then kind of a copy paste this one. So that's why we want to move this header from our index where we're going to have our this is content of the index PHP file, right? And now we want to add this here. So this pretty, uh, looks pretty much the same. However, now we have just the content of the file over here. And this is what we want to focus on. So this is how we added the um, CSS to our PHP project. CSS and JS actually, right? And every time we want to add something else, um, now we, ha we have kind of a choice because if we want to add some specific JS, which will work only in um, this file, index.php, then we can just add it over here. Uh, the same goes for CSS. We can just add it either at the beginning or the end. Or if we want to add something which was supposed to be working on each and every page, then we will uh, basically uh, adding this to either header or footer. Now let's quickly uh, work on our header. So what do we need to do here? Uh, let's change the uh, home. Okay, hold on, we have this. Uh, so the home will remain um, CMS. I think this is the one. Here we will have uh, something like dashboard. And we also have the uh, logout page, uh, logout link actually, uh, which we're gonna work on in a second. So let's just refresh. And we have this navbar item. Oh, this here it is. So MDB CMS. We can put any icon we want here. And now we have our links over there. Okay, and let's see if home works. Okay, home doesn't work. So it shouldn't be CMS. It should be just dash. No, no, it's like, okay, so dash CMS. Yeah, now it's working fine. So basically, usually we would be using just just dash, but basically dash refers to our local host and we are working in the subfolder, therefore we are adding this CMS over here. When we go and deploy this to the mm, our server, which will be like, I don't know, mydomain.com, and we will have uh, these files in working directory. We will just do the slash, but just now we're gonna stick to the CMS. Okay, so we know how to add CSS and JS into our project. So now let's move on to our login page. Okay, so for our login page, uh, we're gonna use uh, forms. So let's go and grab some sample form from here. Cool, so we have this basic example and let's copy and paste it here and let's put it uh, instead of this one okay i'm just blindly copying paste refreshing we have it here so it's a little bit too big so what we're gonna do we're gonna add the uh, container and row or actually we, row we already have right so let's add uh, do we have row no we don't have row so we're gonna put uh, this entire form inside a row uh, so let's do uh, container and inside this container, we want to have a row with justify content center. Okay, and now we can get grab this to or we can grab our form and put it inside it. Okay, it looks better now. Um, however, let's add just uh, margin top five to give some space from the top. Okay, here it is. And let's add one more call. Let's uh, give it a MD6 and let's wrap it around our form. So, okay, now it's centered. Okay, and it doesn't work because I missed dash over here. Okay, so now we have nice centered login form. Let's do format document. Oh, we don't have any formatters yet. So let's uh, let's use some formatter. Um, let's try this one. And let's see if this works fine. 
format document. Cool. Now it's working perfectly fine. Our code uh, is neat. Um, okay, so we have a login form now. Let's uh, work on our form itself because we have to uh, give it a proper names. So we will have this one as email and then ID uh, will be email as well. We're also going to need a name of the input because we're going to pass this value via PHP. So let's do name. Oh, sorry, this is uh, email. Okay, and this uh, label is for email. And then we're going to have password here. So do the same or password. And let's add this name attribute over here as well, which is password. Okay. As you can see, my Chrome already reminds a couple of those, which might be a bit annoying over here, but we're going to handle that. Um, cool. So now we want to also change our form method to post. So let's see what's going to happen now. Um, let's do, uh, let's do a small debug and let's try to var dump. This is, uh, this is something like um, console log in JS. Uh, so let's do uh, our post variable uh, and let's see what, uh, how does it look like. So uh, when I refresh the page, this is, this, is the sim this is the simple array. There is nothing in it. Now if I put some user and password here, and I click, oh, it's a validation, user at mail.com, and I click sign in. As you can see, this form has been submitted. So the page was reloaded, and this values from our form, they have been passed into this post variable. So we can see that we have a string, which is 13 character long, and it has value user at mail.com, and then we have a password, which has a uh, password. By the way, one thing I didn't mention yet, uh, we're not going to store a password in the plain text, obviously. This is very insecure. We don't want to do it. So we're going to be using the uh, hashing mechanism, which will make basically make a hash of the password, which means uh, the hashing functions was basically works the way that if every time we pass the same text, it will give us the same hash. So the hash looks like something really, you know, it's a kind of a random uh, sets of characters, but what is important is that every time we give ABC, the hash is the same. That's why we can verify that user used the same password, because if the password is the same, the hash also is going to be the same. Great, so once we have our um, variables ready, let's try to connect to a database. Um, now, very important thing, I'm going to show you very bad way first. And I urge you not to do it this way. I'm showing you just for the learning purpose because I've seen so many tutorials doing this that way, but it's very dangerous and I don't want you to do this that way. So what you can see is um, you can, with PHP, you can easily build a query, which would look something like this. Select star, star means all from users where email equals and now we will have this post this is array right so we can access it as normal array and we want to get email from here and then we want to just do dot and password equals pretty much the same just the password And then this is our query. And then we will do result equals MySQLI query. And we're going to pass two variables once it's connect, which we have defined in the other file. And the other will be query. So let's stop here for a second uh, because we will want to, uh, we will, we will like to fetch our uh, record from MySQLI fetch ASK and then it will fetch it from result. 
but let's do it one by one. So let's do a var dump our query here. Okay, and let's do die because we don't want to move forward. So this will basically stop our execution over here. Let's refresh it. And this is our query. Hold on, we're also going to comment this out for a second. So this is the query which we are sending to database. So select Gaska from users where email equals to end password and so on. Okay, so this is how you can easily create any query to database, any SQL statement in PHP. As you can see, it's fairly simple, right? So that you can easily uh, use um, the variables which we have on our front end and then combine them to the our backend. Mm. Now, what's important here is that uh, you can just grab this query and you can go to uh, your uh, PHP admin. And then if you go to uh, SQL, you can just paste this one. And hit go. As you can see, it complains that we didn't select the database. So let's go into CMS and now it's selected. So let's do the same and let's hit go. And we have empty result because obviously we don't have any users over here. So let's add, uh, let's insert some variables here. For ID, we're not gonna, we're gonna put it empty. For username, let's do it admin and then admin at mail.com. For the password, we want to use uh, hashing. So we're going to use SHA. Okay, and this will hash our password. So let's do secret over here. For this one, we want to have active and let's do go. So now if we go to users, you will see we have our admin. This is our pass, uh, hashed password. So if we go back to the SQL statement and we run this query, it will give an empty result because obviously we have a wrong username and or email and wrong password. So let's edit this one and let's change it to admin and then secret and let's hit go and it doesn't work again. Why? Because as you may notice, we are trying to compare our password with its hashed value, which obviously won't work. So in order to do it, we need to make sure that we're going to do a SHA1 function, which going to make a hash of our secret password. And now, as you can see, showing rows uh, zero, one total query, and this is our fetched record. So this is how it works. Now, I told you at the beginning that this is a very bad way of using it, and I have a full video about SQL injection, which uh, you can find in the description down below. If you want to know more about how to hack website, how to mm, obviously in the ethical way, and I'm not doing this for you to hack someone else, I'm doing this for you so you could know how you can be hacked and how to pre prevent from uh, doing that. Long story short, because user is def deciding what he's putting over here and we are just blindly copying this, whatever he put here, into our SQL statement, he could change it in such a way that this query would look like this. And one equals one, which is obviously true, and then add comment, so the rest is ignored. So now if we put anything over here, we'll still get access to the admin account. But as I mentioned, more on that, in a separate video. So now let's do this in a proper way, which means we're going to use a prepare statement, which is uh, designed to make it secure. Um, so we're going to get rid of this. Or actually, before we're going to get rid of this, uh, we didn't check this one. So I'm just going to show you this, uh, what would happen here. So let's go and move it slightly over here. So now we want to query our result and we need to make sure that uh, that our uh, this is mail that should be admin and that was secret. Okay, so let's go to CMS again. Mm, oh, we can't do die now. Uh, and actually we don't, uh, one thing which is important over here is that we basically don't want to do it every time. We don't want this PHP code to run every time. So we only want to run it if 
is set post and let's say email. So we want to run this SQL statement. We want to query our database only if our form has been submitted, right? So now, because it wasn't submitted, there is no errors because this code basically wasn't executed. So now we will do admin at mail.com and the password was secret. And by the way, it will not work because we need to uh, do hashing over here. So SHA1. Okay. Uh, I got a refresh page, unfortunately. Save this refresh. So admin secret sign in. And now we can see that uh, what we have here, this is the first var dump. So this is our query, right? And this is the object MySQL result. So as you can see, we have one row selected over here. And if you want to check this row, let me comment this out so we, you can clearly see what's going on. So we already have seen query, we've seen our result. And then this is how our record looks like. So as you can see, we have um, some kind of object over here. And now if we want to access it, we can basically, uh, oh, actually it should be record. And now we can see that we have our record restored from database. So we have email, password, obviously hashed, active, and so on and so on. Okay, but as I said, this is very bad practice. Let's don't do that. So I'm going to just wipe it out just to make sure that you don't even try to use it and let's do it proper way. Okay. We don't need to wipe it out this condition. We need to wipe it out this content. And then now let's do this in a proper way. So we're going to use the prepare statement for that. Um, how are we going to do that? Let's do if now statement equals connect, which is our connection variable prepare. So we're going to prepare our statement first, and then we're going to let PHP to fill in the proper uh, variables into it. So we want to do pretty much the same select star from users where email equals question mark and password equals question mark. Let's do one. Let's add one more um, condition here. So let's do and active equals question mark because we obviously we want uh, we want to uh, add users actually it's not question mark sorry only one we want to let only the active users to log in and now let's since this is if statement so we are here if this is successful we want to do uh, first of all we want to prepare our password so we want to have a hashed password in the variable. So that's going to be something you already know. So SHA1 and this was uh, underscore post and then password. By the, by the way, please note that we are not doing any JavaScript validation here. Uh, we, we could do that, but uh, this is not the subject of that lesson. We are going to focus purely on SQL and backend. Um, so we have password now prepared. So let's do this statement now. And something very important, bind para. Okay, and this isn't equal, this should be dash. And now we want to pass two or couple arguments here. First, we're going to decide on what kind of parameters we are passing. We're going to set strings. We have two strings here. This is our first string. So email is our first string and password is obviously our second string. Um, so we want to have a string string and now we are passing this parameter. So what we want to give it to the uh, function to bind it. So we want to have post and then we have email and the other one will be a hashed password. Okay, so this will bind our this will bind our variables into the query and now we can execute our quite statement. So STM execute is going to run our query and now we can fetch our result. So the result equals statement get results and let's get user out of it equals result 
fetch ASOC. So this is like we did before. And let's do var dump our user. And let's see if that works. And we can uh, refresh our page right now. And as you can see, it's working perfectly fine. Um, by the way, um, just to make sure that it's working fine, let's just go enter again, because uh, just to show you that this is not uh, this is not uh, the previous result from the previous query. So let's sign in, and we have our uh, connection correct. So we are good to let this user sign in. Let's try one more thing. So let's do admin add, and then different password. And now we have null, so basically uh, it doesn't work. We didn't find the user, right? So now what we want to do in such a case, we want to do uh, something like that. So if user, if user, only then, so if this is not null, so I can't, I can't exist and we can proceed. What we want to do, we want to set our session variables and that's gonna be important in a second to secure our uh, views. So we wanna set our ID onto user ID. So that will, that will allow us to store our ID in a session so we don't have to go to um, database every time. And for the email, we're gonna set our user email. And we can do this for username as well. So let's do that. So we will know his name. Uh, and what we want to do here, we want to, now we want to know a person that we, it was successfully logged in. And we want to redirect it to the some other page. So um, okay, let's just do the comment here to do uh, give a feedback, uh, like a welcome message. Uh, we're not gonna do it now because it's a little bit tricky. So we're gonna do it in the next lesson. Um, and we want to set header to location dashboard PHP. So we'll get our user redirect and then we want to die because we don't we want to close this one and finally we want to statement close our connection to the database just to make sure that it's not gonna remain stale um, and here if we have this condition over here this is the one so if for some reason we are not able to do this statement, prepare this statement, let's just do uh, an echo. Let's do could not prepare statement. So we know that something is actually wrong with our code. Okay, cool. So we have it now. Let's see if we're gonna get redirect to, um, to the page, admin at mail.com, password is secret, sign in and it's working fine. We don't have this dashboard yet. Uh, but we're gonna create it in a second. Uh, but it's working perfectly fine right now. And uh, last thing I wanna do, let's get rid of this remember me and forget password because we're not gonna uh, do this in this scenario. So let's just basically get rid of it. So we will have simple uh, and neat login form.